Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. But never duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So as you can see, I have the Jackson Kelly in front of me right now. I've been doing a little bit of work on the body. I've got the last final coat of epoxy resin on the top of the body. I really don't have to do any buffing at all. I do have to like try to fix a little bit on these corners. For some reason, the epoxy resin does not like sharp corners. So I'm going to have to do a little bit on these two corners. The other two corners are fine. Not no problems at all with that. So I ended up doing is putting a black on the sides and around the edge over here where it angles and then having the pattern on the top of it. The back of it is natural with a little bit of a uh, black pearl um, dye in it. And that gave it a little bit of a tint, so the back of it has more of a natural look to it. Uh, and still carrying on with the darker around the edges where it's tapered. So right here I have a neck, and kind of an interesting story with this neck. Uh, number one, I really don't care for how the template came out on here. Uh, it's already glued, and uh, yeah, so I think the glue ended up changing the color a little bit. And I'm not quite liking the match up here like some of the orange and yellows that's in here it's not matching up with the orange and yellows in here I'm thinking if I put a little bit of the dyes that I have as far as because um, I planned on putting a pearl on this as well I'm hoping that that will darken it up and kind of bring the color out a little bit and as you see I got a little bit of a Jackson logo on here as well it's already printed on the uh, template here and I saved the template I know what size I got to make the Jackson logo and stuff. Um, I didn't put it really close to the edge like it's supposed to be. So there are some things on here that I'm not too happy about. So I'm going to end up probably redoing this. But it's a learning experience as far as you know how I am when it comes to stuff. If I don't like it, it is going to get redone. So the neck, um, I was sitting in the parking lot waiting for my wife to get out of work. And a guy walked up to me. He saw the back of my... Uh, SUV and he's like oh so you do guitar work and stuff I says yeah I've been kind of dabbling a little bit with guitars and stuff and uh, mostly setups and refinishing and, and I, he says yeah he does uh, body builds bodies and builds necks and I'm like oh okay and I says well how much would you charge me to build a Jackson neck for me and he's like well what style do you want it and then the uh, scale length and stuff so I end up telling him what I've got and what I need and he's like, yeah, you know, I can make one of those for you. He says, it's not that big of a deal. So he ended up coming up with this. It's got a scarf drawing in it. Um, he rounded out the heel part so it fits in here perfect. And uh, his front work is not too bad. It's a little bit sharp, but I can fix that. And I told him not to put any frets inside of it anyways. I said, I can put the frets in myself. That's not a big deal. I says, but I just needed someone to make me a neck. So it's got a 2 way truss rod inside of it. Um, and it's made out of uh, uh, hard maple, Canadian hard maple. So, yeah, it's not bad at all. And he sanded it down. It's really fucking smooth. That's why I ended up putting this on here without having to sand it because it's already been, it's already been sanded real nice. And this ain't coming off. I tell you, when I use the epoxy as an adhesive, um, that shit works out really good. It ain't coming off. And right here, if I tried picking this, a little bit of epoxy right here. I'll probably pull some of the wood with it, and I really don't want to do that. So I ended up getting pretty much all the parts. I got a brand new roller bridge for this thing, and I've got a little bit of a color scheme going with the hardware itself. So I want to see how that works out. I got my EMG pickups, and I got some uh, brand new Goto locking tuners for this. So what I'm thinking about doing so I'm going to go with, uh, for the heart of wear, gold and black. All right, so I've got my bridge that's got a little bit of gold in it because it's got brass saddles on there, or rollers. Um, so I've got gold pins that will go in over here for it. Um, all the screws, because it will be black EMGs, all the screws, I'm going to try and uh, get them all gold. If I can, I know I have a bag of them someplace of uh, mounting screws for pickup rings and shit like that. But I want to try to do this without putting pickup rings on there. So I don't know how that's going to work or if it's going to work or not. And then I have some, either I'm going to use black washers around the uh, Goto tuners or washers and nut. 
going around the tuners. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that works out. So I'll continue with a scheme going on and kind of blend in with the body itself, black on the sides, black on the back, um, and kind of got all go together but this is not what this video is about this video is about something else I'm going to start working on very very shortly and uh, has to do with the owner or the new owner of the trooper electric guitar so let's get into that so yeah I got a little bit of an unboxing to do but first of all I want to show you a little thing about how you get screwed on eBay as far as purchasing stuff all right now the seller of this product didn't know what he's got as far as what he's selling and it kind of pissed me off when I received the package about it because I really need this tape and um, didn't get what I wanted so here's the tape as you can see it's like all bent up and twisted and fucking I had to get rid of some of it and throw it away this one here it's barely holding on real thin now I've used this stuff several times before what this is supposed to be is a vinyl automotive fine line taping okay this is for like if you're doing flames if you're doing something with a lot of bends in it um, and it's real thin to where you don't really get a bad tape line if you spray things right so I was sitting there and looking at this shit the guys like uh, yeah it's it's vinyl tape and it's supposed to stretch and shit. I was like, okay, well, let's take a look at this. So let me find one that I've already kind of tried to use this shit. And so here's the tape, all right? So if I break this tape, if this was vinyl tape, if I were to grab it and pull it, it would stretch. It broke. This is paper. This is not vinyl. This is masking tape. This is regular masking tape shit. Although it is sticky, and it will serve or possibly serve a purpose for doing straight lines. I want to see how it works as far as what paint goes, if there's going to be a problem or not. Uh, but yeah, this is like, this is the crap that the guy sent me. So I sent him a message and I told him, I says, listen, this is supposed to be vinyl tape. I said, this is paper tape. I says, and number one, uh, I don't even know if it's automotive grade for painting and shit. Uh, I haven't tried, I've tried to use it for something else other than what I'm doing now with paints and stuff. And it seemed to work out fine as far as peeling it off. There's no bleed through or anything else that's happening with the tape itself. But this is crap. You know, it's not even 3M. It's, I don't know what the fuck it's called. Uh, G U N G U A N T I A. Yeah, I don't know. This sounds like fucking something that's Chinese to me. But, so I had to order the good stuff. And the good stuff is going to be used on this next project of mine. So let me show you this. Alright, so I got a big unboxing to do. And I got to see how he did this. Looks like he did it from the side. So he had to take a uh, guitar box and kind of make a box for this. Now, this owner of this guitar here, or guitar body, uh, he also is the now owner of the Trooper guitar that he's, you know, pretty happy with, which I'm glad. Uh, so let's try to find out where he taped this, how he taped this, and if I can get it open. So if I hit it from the side, now the box came in decent shape. I've got a problem with my UPS or uh, uh, USPS guy, mail, regular mail, to where he likes to throw shit around. All right. So I told this guy to ship it to UPS, which he did. Let me get it out of the box. I don't want to dock him or anything, so it's got it pretty, pretty tight in. I told him to leave everything on here for the electronics because I'm going to, oh, this is nice. This is an old, I think he said this was a Charvel. I want this side, I don't want this side. I always use some type of protection with my guitars. So hopefully I can get some of this yellowing out. It looks like he's got a, a chip in a clear coat right here. Uh, all right, he taped all this up. 
this could stay yeah, I think he said this was a Charvel but it's got Jackson pickups inside of it so what I'm going to do with this is he want first off we start talking about um, what he wanted to do with it as far as putting something on the body that he's interested in that he likes now with it having a Floyd two single coils and a humbucker and then all the switching it's a little bit difficult to put something to cover the whole body of the guitar that has a lot of detail in it because you're going to be missing out a lot of the detail and it's going to end up um, basically just distorting everything that you're looking at like what I've done with the Iron Man guitars uh, removing a pickup, putting uh, a cover over the pickup. Now, obviously, I wouldn't do that with these Jacksons, um, but certain pickups I would do it with. This is, does not f completely flat surface. These, the Jackson logo is kind of raised up, so that's going to show through. But I wouldn't do that with this unless he said, go for it. But it's going to distort the whole image that's on the body of the guitar. And, you know, this guy likes Speed Razor. Speed Racer, who doesn't? I grew up in that era as well. I used to watch all the cartoons. Uh, yeah. So I kind of did a little bit of a design on the computer for him with a similar picture of this body. And I had the Speed Racer over here. And then over here, I had the car Mach 5 uh, to kind of go in there. So it wouldn't like. Uh, be distorted from the pickups or anything. It didn't look right. I tried different ways of doing it and it still just didn't come out to where you can actually see and make out what the image is and actually know what that is other than seeing the speed racer and writing on there. And even that was getting blocked off by the Floyd Rose a little bit. So what I ended up doing is I ended up like removing the Floyd Rose, cop copying it, uh, cutting it, copying it, uh, putting the thing, everything back on the guitar after I put the image on the body uh, in its location that it was and it just kind of like yeah did not look right he wasn't too happy with it either so I was like okay that's fine so he came up with another idea and sent me a photo of it and I'm going to end up doing that now the one thing I have to figure out here is the color on this is really Well, you know what? I'm going to end up wet sanding this whole body. So this coloring here, like this chip here, some of the marks that are in on around the edges and stuff, and if there's anything on the back, a little bit on the back, that's all going to come out. So this is all going to be wet sanded and resprayed with clear. And I'm going to be using 2K clear on this. I'm not going to be using epoxy resin. But the design that he wants on here, it's going to fit perfect and you'll able to make out what it is without any problems. So this is going to work out pretty good. So i got to pluck these guys out. I'm going to pull these out, which I have a special tool for that. Remove all the electronics that are on here. Um, mask off. I don't want to get any clear coat or anything inside here. It looks like he had uh, like double holes over here. Well, not on this side, but it looks like on this side he had to angle the holes somehow. But uh, this will be all covered and masked off. Um, I will probably put shielding paints inside these cavities. And I've seen pictures of this. Does he have shielding paint inside here? No, he does not. It does have a copper tab here. But that's about it. Yeah, he said he would have to take this over to uh, his luthier or somebody to take and um, disconnect all this. I hope he still has the screws. I think this, what is this? Oh, it's got a plate on there. All right. So he said he was going to have to take this over to his luthier or somebody to uh, go ahead and disassemble all this wiring and shit. And I told him, I said, just leave it in there. I said, that's not going to be a big deal for me. I said, I'll be able to uh, uh, put everything back inside here the way it was and stuff. And so I want to see. That's a pickup. That's a pickup. See, where everything is going is not really a... 
So it's got everything's going into the switches first. So this has got a three-way switching system before it gets to everything else. So instead of having a uh, blade switch or having a three-way switch, he's got three separate switches here. So I see how that works. And this is active. Nice. Now I'm probably not going to do any fancy wiring over here because it looks like he's got the harness and everything uh, pretty much buttoned up to where you know it, it it looks like it's a mess, but it actually it's actually pretty clean the way he's got this because if I unscrew everything, everything's going to come out and fall back in with no problems. I'll have to desolder. Is it a plate over here? No, I'll have to desolder this over here. Like I said, I'll probably put some shielding paint inside there if he wants me to. Uh, he'll probably send me an email after this video. And then uh, put some shielding paint inside of here as well. Or I can do the silver. Uh, well, I don't have the copper. All I got is the silver shielding tape. But we'll leave it up to him if he wants it or not. Um, not much is going on inside of here. But yeah, the clear coat on this is pretty thick from what I could feel with this chip. So I got a lot of a lot of clear here to where I'm going to wet sand. So I'll probably wet sand it with 800 grit. If I go with 600 grit, that might be too fine of a uh, grit as far as having a clear coat adhere to. You know, having something to bite into it. So I'm thinking I'll just go with the 800. Uh, 400 may possibly leave scratch marks. Uh, it could. But so I'm not going to go out that route. I'll go with the 800 grit and uh, or 600 grit. I mean, and uh, get this thing done. You see where the neck overlapped over here. All that will come out. Hopefully, this yellowing will come out and it'll bring it back to the color because the coloring, the yellowing is in the clear coat, not the finish itself. All right, so I've got another unboxing to do. I'm going to put this off to the side. I'm going to leave it like this for now because I need to get into there put you off to the side again I don't want to dox anybody so here is another package I end up getting and it's a year for the bubble wrap I tell you, I thought maybe I thought maybe I was gonna uh, end up getting all a lot most of the bubble wrap that I sent with the Trooper guitar back, but it looks like he ended up getting different bubble wrap for his wrapping his guitar, because I used a whole roll in the box of bubble wrap. I tell you, when I pack it, I don't want it, I don't want it to move. I don't want it to go anywhere. I, I want it to be protected all the way around. The nice thing about the one the Trooper guitar is it came with a halfway decent not all that great but halfway decent gig bag that looked like it was brand new so I ended up giving that back or giving that with Jesus, it's like Christmas time over here so I gave that with the guitar and hell I think right now it's our it's it's early in the morning right now I'm awake because I have things I have to do today other than this I have some other things I have to do today. So I'm awake right now. And uh, the Live After Death guitar should be coming up as far as the option goes. So let me get the tape off of this. Oh, the tape has already been taken off of this. All right, so what this is is Kurt Hammett, Bone Breakers. So what I ended up doing is the guy who had this up for sale. I think it was like, I don't know if it was 160 bucks. I think it was when I saw this. So I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get it because I'm going to put them in something. Nice little case here. All right, this is sealed up. That's what I was seeing the tape on the side for. Now from what the pictures looked, even though this was used, Nothing, none of this has been used. It all has, there's no solder on anything. Everything's, the terminals and stuff all still look clean. I mean, everything looks clean on this thing. There's, there's no soldering on nothing. And, let's see, if I can get this shit out. How the hell you pack this? Get it from the back. Now I got pickup rings with this, which I didn't have pickup rings with the other set. 
and you know it's got the terminals on there maybe he did use them this is the bridge pickup or no the neck pickup the bridge pickup is right here that should have a thicker maybe a thicker unless this comes with pickup rings I don't know yeah there's this one here is the bridge it's got 160 bucks for a set of Kurt Hammett active uh, active set let me just get all this shit out of here and see what the hell it looks like So everything looks like it is a plug-and-play, exception of the, yeah, see, I've got a few of these that weren't needed uh, with some of the kits, because when you buy, like, one pickup, it comes with the wire harness and shit like that in one of these, so you end up with extra. So everything is plug-and-play. It looks like everything is here, including the washer for a three-way switch. Yeah, it looks like everything is all here. All the wiring and shit's here. Doesn't look like it's all messed up or cut up or anything. Cool. Yeah. So I'll repackage this up later on. Put this back in its place over here. Actually, I'll repackage this in right now because I want to get it out of the way. So I'll put this one over here. This one over here. Take all this out because it's going to have to fit in there all over again. Put this in here just like this. Put you in there. Come on, get in there, you. Now you're going to get hooked on shit, right? Of course, it never goes back in the same way as you're taking it out. But you get the idea. So, yeah, I'll probably have another project that I'll end up be working on later on uh, this year. And, uh, I'll put these inside there. Right now, the EMG 81, the 81 and the 85 are going into the Kelly, and these will go into another project I'll end up working on later on. So, why do they have the bottom cut out? And I ended up taking it out the wrong way, didn't I? So, I'm thinking about stocking up on certain brand pickups. Um, this way I don't have to order anything at last minute. Kind of like all the pots that I have and everything else. Uh, I don't have to order last minute. Same thing with tuners. I need to pick up some more tuners. This way I can have this stuff before I end up, uh, you know, getting the project and having to run down a parts list and get everything going over here. So like tuners, pickups, uh, I have pots, I have switches. Um, I have wire, plenty of wire. Uh, you know, bridges. I got a box full of brand new bridges, roller bridges included, tunematic bridges. Uh, I don't have very many hardtail bridges uh, or you know bridges that get mounted to the body. I don't have very many of those because I've been buying a lot of guitars that have tunematic bridges on them, and then just putting a roller bridge replacing it with something else. I got a shitload of brand new, brand new stuff with that goes. It's all in a box. All kinds of screws, all kinds of connectors, you know, whatever it is. Um, plenty of damn uh, uh, shrink tubing as far as, you know, making everything look decent. So, yeah, this will be the next project. I'll be working on this one and uh, hopefully getting more in, more in. And uh, that will be kind of cool to start uh, working on other people's stuff and customizing their stuff um, instead of me buying a guitar, you know, somebody else could send theirs to me and I can end up doing something with their body uh, instead of doing what I've been doing, which I don't mind it, I kind of like it, and I'm rambling on. Why? Because I am a little bit tired right now, although I have to stay up at least uh, for another three or four hours before I can go. To, I, be, I got up around, I think it was like uh, two something in the morning to work on something, and uh, I've been up ever since. So right now it is about five, I think, five-ish, something like that. Let me see. No, it's only 421. It feels like it's five o'clock in the morning, but it's only 421. So that's my story, guys. I am sticking to it. This is going to be the next project, um, which I'm going to start working on kind of right away. Uh, wow, this guitar was white? Or what is this white shit that they painted around here? Huh. It's white and it discolored this much. Wow. Somebody either had this in, in outside in the sunlight or, or heavy, heavy smokers. 
but I don't think it was white. I think it had a little bit of a tint to it. But anyways, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And, uh, you know, the owner of this will probably contact me with uh, some more details as far as what he wants done. Like I said, if he wants the uh, shielding paint painted in all the cavities, um, if not, that's fine, too. So you guys take it easy. Have a good one. I will catch up with you all later. And, yeah, have a great week.